Welcome to Chaos to Clarity. Monday the 17th, lots of clay, chaos, not a lot of clarity. This has been a tricky storm, um, and I still think there's a lot of tricks this storm's going to have up its sleeve. Uh, at the current time, not much of the model guidance predicts much of a snowstorm for anybody. I, I'm, I'm skeptical of that. I'll show you why. Uh, let me just get into the ingredients here as we go forward. I'll give you a snowfall map, explain why I'm different. Seems like I'm out on the island uh, by myself, which, uh, to tell you the truth, I normally am. Uh, but uh, I'll show you what's going on here. L let's first talk about the ingredients for this storm. All right. Y you have energy up in here east of James Bay, and then you have this belt of energy coming into the northwest. As we talked about last week, you're going to get this trough digging southward. This energy comes around the bend. This is the storm that forms. And the question is, where does this trough set up to either guide this up the coast or go out to sea? We talked about both possibilities over the weekend. At least I thought I did on Twitter. Although I did think maybe on Saturday there was a better than 50-50 chance this was coming up the coast. But it does appear is like it's going to take more of a track like this offshore. But it's pretty tricky on how much snow is going to be on the backside. But those are the ingredients. They're on the North American continent right now. So we should continue to get better clarity with some of the modeling here. All right, let me show you what's going on, and I'll show you what my concern is and why I feel like I'm out on, the, out on an island by myself. This is the European... This is 1 o'clock this afternoon. Here's the energy into the northwest. And then here's your dip in the jet stream, this energy in here that comes southward. Again, you want this energy to come out ahead of the storm, out ahead of this dip in the, uh, dip in the jet stream, and then have this system guide it northeastward. So let's go to tomorrow morning. Here's the dip in the jet stream that we're looking at, 1 o'clock. Here it is. It's in here. And then here's the energy. Now, right now, these systems are at the same uh, longitude, so this would be driven south. Let's go, and this is the European, this is the American model, and, and this, is the, this is the American model, this is the NAM. So the NAM, GFS, European, pretty good agreement. Um, the NAM's a little beefier with, with the Southern Rockies system, but it's not much. Let's go to Wednesday morning. Okay, here's your trough. Whoop, Wednesday morning. Here's your trough right in here. All right, here's the energy. So it's moving out. It's moved out ahead of the main trough. So it will then start to come to the east and north. Now, that that is the European. This is the NAM. European, NAM. NAM's a little sharp with the trough, but pretty much the same solution. And there's the GFS. GFS a little weaker with this system. And you'll also notice it's kind of fragmented. You have a number of pieces with this. So that's the other question, which is the... Which is the piece of the storm? Is it this? Is it this? Or it's this? That makes things a little tricky. All right, let's get toward Wednesday evening. Stop right here. There we go. Now, this is the European, GFS, NAM, pretty much the same with the trough. The problem is, for the, those that are looking for this to come up the coast, the trough is what I call positively tilted. So your energy is in here. The problem is, is your steering flow is out of the west-southwest. So that's why at this point, the storm steers to the east-northeast and it comes up the coast. The question I have is, as this storm comes up the coast, is it here? Is it here? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure the modeling either is sure. But I want you to watch this piece of energy, this upper low in here. Watch this as we go forward. Right here. This is Thursday morning. You've got a trough now that's starting to go more neutrally tilted. Look at all of this energy pointing into this part of eastern Virginia. Now, yes, the energy for the storm is offshore, but that's what concerns me with this. And, you know, the European has it. The NAM's not as deep, but look at the NAM. That's a lot of energy pointing across northern Virginia. And there's the GFS. In fact, the GFS and the European, pretty similar. Perhaps you can say the, the European's a little deeper with the trough, but it still has all of this wind energy. And there should be upward motion in this area, you know, late Wednesday night, Thursday morning. That's my concern. When I look at the upper air pattern, I would think that you're getting precipitation back in here, right in here. Now, your surface storm supposedly is out here. Let me show you the surface map here. 
and you can see what I mean. So let me, that, that was Thursday morning. Let, let's go to the surface map Thursday morning, right in here. See, by that time, there's the, this is the GFS, storms way offshore. You can see it. There is the NAM. Now, see what the NAM is interesting. See how the NAM's blowing up precipitation right in southeastern Virginia and the Delmarva Peninsula? GFS is, does it, but it's doing it late, and, um, and the Europeans doing the same thing. I mean, if you took these models verbatim, if you just took them verbatim here, there'd be virtually, I keep going to the wrong one, I'm sorry, there would be virtually no snow in this area, New York City, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., even Richmond, you'd only get a few inches of snow. No one would be getting over six inches, for the most part, in the mid-Atlantic. And that, when I look at the 500 millibar, what I was just looking at, that doesn't look right to me. I want to show you one more thing, and then I'll show you the snowfall map. And again, I'm telling you, no one's going to show you a snowfall map that I'm about to show you. Either people aren't predicting anything yet, they want to wait, or they're taking the models, look, you know, hook, line, and sinker, that there's not a lot of snow with this. But I do want to show you this. Now, do I think it's perfect? No. It's the national blend of models. It's all of the models that we have in this country blending. And this is from 12Z, and maybe it's going to change. But I want to show it to you here really quick. And I'm not saying it's 100% correct, but given the 500 millibar presentation I just showed you, it does cause me pause. And I think when you have a storm like this, oftentimes there's last minute changes. And my concern is, is that there's more snow on the western side of the storm than what modeling is currently showing. Could I be wrong on that? Yeah, I could. I could, but something bugs me about it. Bugs me enough that I'm not ready to take out snow from New York City, Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. Now, I can tell you this. People on X, <laughs> I'm getting called all kind of names, but that goes with the territory. But I want to show you the, again, this is the national blend of models, everything. Now, it, it, it has three inches in D.C., three inches in New York City, three to six Central Long Island and all five inches all the way up toward Boston. And, you know, here's your six area plus here. Now, do I think this is 100% correct? No, but it does cause me pause a little bit, especially in this area. I've been highlighting this area for a couple of days that I'm afraid this area, the models are underdoing the precip on the backside of the storm. That because you've got this trough digging southward, and let me go back to that to show you what I mean again, that you've got this 500 millibar trough right here. That's a lot of energy from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock in northern Virginia. You see that? There's the NAM. There's the European. Look at that. Comes through. Now, is everything offshore and there's too much dry air? Maybe. I, I could see that. Even the GFS. Everybody's showing this energy in here, and yet there's virtually no snow predicted. That just bugs me a little bit here. And then even if you go out here, even at one o'clock Thursday, and again, supposedly the storm's way out here, but you have a dew southerly wind at 500 millibars across central and eastern Long Island with a 500 millibar low here. Something's funny to me with this setup. I, I just, and, and, and it could be I'm being stubborn. Could be. Something bugs me with this, that I'm not ready to give up on the accumulating snow from New York City, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. Now, I want to stress, that's not where the snowstorm is going to be. I think it's in southeastern Virginia, and I even think the modeling is a little underdone there. But that's my concern as we move forward. And again, I'll show you the snowfall map, and again, none of the models are, any, are going with what I'm showing here. Let me show you the snowfall map. First, I do want to begin out in the Southern Plains. I don't want to ignore the Southern Plains here. Um, there. Um, th this is going to be a formidable storm in Kansas and, and Southern Missouri. I mean, we have a pretty big area of 6 to 12 inches out in here. And you're going to get wind blowing out of the east-northeast. Temperatures in the teens, it's going to be nasty, you know, 
as we get mostly into Monday night and Tuesday in this area. That's a nasty day. And watch I-40 from Oklahoma City to Little Rock. Now, let's get to this map here. This is the map that we have. And listen, I I think New York City's one to three inches here. I still think you can squeeze out an inch or two from New York City to Fort Philadelphia. Now, Washington, D.C., I... I have trouble believing you're getting six inches, but can I see three, three to six? Sure, maybe on the three end, yes. And even across southern New Jersey, I could see how you squeeze out three or four inches here. And I still think this zone in here, you know, from from Richmond, uh, you know, Salisbury up in here, you know, we have four to eight in this area. I could see how there's over six inches of snow here. I really can. Again, none of the modeling is suggesting that, but Let's watch this as we go forward. Now, I think Boston may be a coating to an inch. There is some belief that you can get three to six inches of snow from central and eastern Long Island out to the Cape and Islands. I could see that as the storm comes northward, the upper low comes underneath, and all of a sudden you have a farther shield of precipitation farther to the west, or there's more of a western shield of the precipitation. And that's my concern with this storm. Now, you get to Interstate 80 on north. There, I mean, I, I don't think there's any snow in here. And again, even Philadelphia toward New York City and in, in, in central New Jersey, I've won the three inches. I've won the three. All right, and three to six southern New Jersey. I, I still think you can squeeze out three in that area from D.C., southern New Jersey, toward Atlantic City, toward Wildwood, you know, Washington, D.C. in that area. But I'd really watch this zone in here where you can get six plus, and I still think that's Richmond. You know, we have four to eight, and I, I still can see how that happens. So, again, a lot of the modeling is a lot drier and a lot farther south with less snow, but I... Maybe I'm being stubborn, but I, I, I really prefer to go in this direction for now. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Obviously, the takeaways is I think the heaviest snow is south of Washington, D.C., toward Richmond and southeastern Virginia here. This is the area to, to watch. This whole area in here, you know, a lot of the modeling, you know, there's a coating to, it's coating to an inch because of the upper low. But this, is, this area is one to watch. This is the bust area where it can go either way in here. This is the bust area toward Washington, D.C., and probably out even toward here where modeling has virtually no snow, and even in here it would be more than a few inches. But I'm going to stay with this for now, and let's, let's watch how this happens, all right? Whenever you have a storm like this, there's always a last-minute surprise, <laughs> And my contention is, is that when you look at the modeling, and I'll go back to this, my thought is this. This is my theory anyway, and I want to go back to the to the surface map. And um, right in here, that the modeling 1 a.m. Thursday, and, and this is the GFS, 1 a.m. Thursday morning, that instead of all of the snow being offshore, you have an area of snow like this right in here, and it's snowing pretty hard in there. Now, not in Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., but that the back edge of the snow is more extensive than the model is showing. Now, if that's the case, and if I'm right, you should start seeing that on the modeling tonight uh, or tomorrow morning. But if it's not there by 12Z, I'll, I'll have to abandon ship as well. And... Um, and we'll, we'll see how this occurs. Stuff forecast. I hope I've explained why I'm going, what I think we're going to do here. And let's see how this happens. Uh, if you have any questions, <laughs> and you can follow me on X. I, I, I say if any questions, you know. Uh, people on X have been getting in touch with me all weekend. Mostly good, but some bad. But that goes with it. And I, I get it. That's the, the field I'm in. You know, you got to take the good with the bad. But if you do have any questions or comments... I'll, I, I see them. You can follow me on X. I'm at Accurano. Let's see how this works out.